morning, Saturday. Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, my goodness. Cannot wait to share this real life lesson. A lesson that I've learned about myself this week. This is a fresh lesson, y'all. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe it. So, let's get started. I was listening to a word um, on yesterday. And I, and I knew that he was talking to me. I was like, oh, my God. I'm doing it. I'm still doing it. What is that thing? Okay, so there's this word that he used, and it's called obstructionist. So let me tell you, let me give, let me give you the definition what an, what an obstructionist is. An obstructionist is a person who deliberately or invert, inadvertently delays or prevents the growth or change in their life or someone else's life. So in other words, a, either a Mr. or Mrs. Fix-It, a Mr. or Miss Fix-It. You think that it's your job to fix, save, and rescue others. And I thought I had got past that. I was like, no, I don't do that no more. Yes, I can say hi to you. How are you? I didn't see um, when you said hello. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. I'm not sure what time zone you're in. So listen, when I heard this, I was like, oh my God, I am doing this. I'm doing this. I am currently doing it. And I thought I had recovered from that. I thought I had healed from that. I thought I wasn't doing that anymore. But when it's people that are real close to you, it's hard to see what you're doing. It's like, wait a minute. I'm not, am I doing that? And I was so convicted because I was stressed. I was frustrated. I was like, you know what? Oh, it's because it because I was doing something I wasn't supposed to be doing. Whenever you find yourself so frustrated and just like it's everything is really, really hard. And it's like you're doing you're not you're, you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. That's not your job to fix, save and rescue others. That is not your job. OK, so let me let me give you the signs because I know I'm not out here by myself. So let me give you the signs and let me know if one of these could be you. Right. So here are five signs that you are an obstructionist. You subconsciously believe that the lesson they need to learn can only come from you. That's number one. Number two, you complain that someone is sucking the life out of you, but you keep giving them the straw. That's number two. Number three, unable to establish and maintain a boundary with a particular person or people who cause you stress and pain. Number four, the way you express your love towards someone is your attempt to control them. Five, you enter a relationship to rescue, save, and fix other people. You enter a relationship to rescue, save, and fix other people. That these are the five signs that you are an obstructionist. So an obstructionist is a person who deliberately or inadvertently delays or prevents the growth or change in their, in their life or someone else's life. It is not your job to fix, save, and rescue other people. Am I the only person that needed to hear that? And then these, these, these signs is like, what? That's what that is. That's what I'm doing. And I realized I had to go, I had to, I had to think like, where does this come from? Right? Cause we got to pull the root up in order to, in order to produce new fruit. You got to pull that root up. I went back to childhood, my teenage years. And I remember seeing my mom in an abusive relationship, right? And she was like, she was getting beaten and I tried to step in. I tried to hit him with a, like this little toy. I never forget it's a red toy horse, like a little horse my brother and sister had. And I stepped in. And I tried to hit him with it. He just pushed me to the side. And I felt so helpless in that moment. And this was where the belief was planted. This is where the seed was planted in my in me. That it was my job to save and rescue other people. And uh it was I thought it was I was reading the comment. I'm sorry. I thought it was my job to save and rescue people in my teenage years, right? So as an adult, I begin to seek those relationships where I can rescue and save and fix other people. 
that ain't my that ain't my job. That ain't your job to save and fix and rescue other people. That is not your job. You trying to do God's job. That ain't your job. Sit down somewhere. My teenager was running a show this week. She was trying to save and rescue, and that was not her job. She was so frustrated. She was just she was just over it. She was just oh my god, like she just literally just wanted to cry because she was like she couldn't she couldn't fix it. She couldn't save it. She couldn't rescue. And it's like that ain't that's not your job. That is not your job. You're frustrated because you're doing something you're not supposed to be doing. That's why you're frustrated. That's why you're stressed out. You're trying to do God's job. That ain't your job. So here are three myths about, you know, obstruction, being an, an obstructionist. An obstructionist is a person who deliberately or inadvertently delays or prevents the growth or change in their life or someone else's life. Here's the myth number one. If I don't help them, they'll fail. That's myth number one. Myth number two, if I don't help them, I'm a failure. That's myth number two. Myth myth number three, thank you. If I don't help them, I don't love them. Those are three myths, lies. In other words, here are the truths. Because after you you expose the lie, you've got to give it, you've got to give it, you've got to replace it with the truth. So here's the truth. You can't control the timing when God will open the eyes of, of, you can't control the timing when God will open the eyes of learning for someone. You can't control the method that God will use to help someone. You can't control the people that God uses to teach the lesson to the people you love. Take your hands off of it. It is not your, it's not your job to fix and rescue other people. That's how you get so frustrated and burned out. You're doing stuff you ain't got no business doing. That ain't your job. It's not your job to do that. And my teenager took over this week. She thought she could save and rescue. Because at a young age, this is what she was taught. This is what she learned. She learned. She saw this excuse. She experienced this, this thing, this abusive relationship. She witnessed this abusive relationship. And she learned that that was her job. That was her belief. Right. I had to go and pull that root up so I can plant new seeds. Those are lies. It is not your job. That's not your job. And a lot of us think that that's what our job is. And we do this subconsciously. Like I was doing this for decades. And I thought, hey, I'm healed from that. I'm doing the work. I'm not doing that no more. But when it's people that are really close to you, you cannot. Sometimes it's hard to see. And then God will send certain people to speak, speak to you. You be like, wait a minute. I'm doing that. They talking to me. I realized I was doing that. And my, and I, and I developed this belief in my teenage years and my teenager was running the show this week. And I was like, no, that ain't your job. That's not your job. Sit down somewhere. That is not your job. And honestly, I think about in that moment, in that, in my, in my teenage moment, what I realized was I thought that God wasn't going to show up because like other people didn't show up. So it's like, oh no, he ain't, he ain't moving fast enough for me. Like he ain't, I don't see him yet. He ain't working fast enough for me. So I got to do something. I got to fix him. I got to save him. I got to rescue him because he ain't moving fast enough. Right. That ain't my job. That is not my job. That is not your job to rescue, save and fix other people. It's not. And I just, that's a fresh, this is a fresh lesson. I'm mean, not say fresh. It's so fresh. I, I don't believe, I don't believe we are sinners saved by his grace. Well, I do. I agree to disagree. And you know what? I re- Repentance, right? Repent, right? I asked God to forgive me for what I was trying to do. That ain't right. That ain't my job, okay? Repair and reposition. Repent, repair, and reposition. The lesson, here's the thing. The lesson was about me. It was not about them. The lesson was about me. It wasn't about nobody else. It was about me. Here's the thing about relationships, just think about, just break that word down. Relate, relationship. So it takes you, relationships takes you on this journey. Relationships takes, relationships take you on a journey, right? And as I look back on my life, I know there were several relationships I went into thinking I could do these things, thinking I could rescue and save them, right? Thinking that um, the way I expressed my love towards someone was my attempt to control them. No, don't do this and don't go there and don't do this and don't do that. That was what I thought was, re- was I was saving them. Like, no, don't, this, don't, don't do that. 
Don't go there. Don't be around that person. Don't go to that place. Don't do that. Don't buy that. Don't. Wait. I thought that was my job. Like I literally thought that was my job. And that's not our job. It is not. And sometimes you have to, good morning, and sometimes you have to give people up. I ain't saying give give up on them, but give them up to God. Because it's stuff that we are not, that's not our job to do. It's not our job to fix, save, and rescue people. That's not your job. And when you find yourself constantly trying to get into relationships to fix people, when I tell you, it's, it is so draining. <laughs> It is so, you're welcome. It is so draining. I'm telling you, I was trying to fix and save and rescue people because in 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 my early teenage years, this is what I learned. Seeing my mom be in abusive relationships, right? And I could not help her. And that just really just killed me. It just just killed something inside of me. A lot of times we don't know that uh, our kids are always watching the show. Our kids are not, our kids are watching the show, not listening to the lecture. Oh, but don't you, don't you be in an obese, abusive relationship while you're in an abusive relationship. Don't you pick nobody like this while you pick somebody like that. Like we have to be mindful of what we are showing them. And ain't really what you're saying because they don't, eh, in, in, in one ear, out the other. They're watching the show. What show are you presenting to your children? Because this is the show I saw. This is how I thought love was. I thought love was abuse. I thought love was abandonment. I thought love was neglect. Because this is what I saw. This was the show that I saw. I had to unlearn all kind of stuff. And I had to learn how to love myself. Because I kept choosing people who didn't love me. Because I didn't love myself. I kept choosing that. And it wasn't, oh, but they they, they a bad person. And all men this and all men that. No, it was me. It was me. I had to go work on me. I had to pull those roots up and plant new seeds because you, I was producing what I, what I learned. That's what I learned. It wasn't, and it wasn't right. (laughs) It was not, it was not productive. I was in some toxic relationships and the most toxic, the most destructive relationship I was in was with myself. I had to get to the root. And so when I find when I find my when I find my find myself in these lessons, I go in like what's what is this trying to teach me? Because the the relationships that we're having with other people is just a mirror to you about something that you need to learn about yourself. That's all relationships are. Every relationship is a mirror showing you you. What do I need? What 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 is this relationship showing me about me? What am I learning about myself? Right. This is what I have learned about relationships. And I never gave up. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to work on me. I'm going I'm going to learn everything I can learn, right? So I can so I can attract that that love that I'm that I know I'm supposed to have, right? But it all starts with me. It all starts with you. So I wanted to share my fresh lesson about being an obstructionist, a Mr. or Mrs. Fix It, thinking that your job is to rescue and save other people. And that's not your job. You will find yourself depleted, frustrated, <laughs> just stuck, right? You're going to, you're going to stack, you're going to be stagnant. You're going to stop your growth when you try to rescue and save other people. Cause that's not your job. And I just wanted to share that because I'm like, man, what? I didn't even realize I was doing it. And sometimes the people is really close to you. It's hard. It's hard to see them literally drive their car. Like, like, and this, this, this is my analogy. It's hard to see your loved ones drive the car, their car off the cliff. It's like, man, you ain't got to do that. Like hit the brake, pull the emergency brake up. But also you got to get out that car. You cannot go over the cliff with them. You got to be willing to give people up, not give up on them, but give them to God. Cause that ain't your job. It's not your job. I'm telling you, I was so frustrated this week. And I realized that my teenager was taking over. She was taking over. She was trying to run the show. I got to go fix. I got to go save. I got to go rescue. No, baby girl, you don't. That's not your job. Learn this. Most people don't figure this out. Too. I'm Listen, you got to. I, I've, I've done so much work, honey. I'm so aware. And it's just, it blows my mind. 
<laughs> the, the lessons that I'm, I'm, I'm learning just like that. I'm like, what is this? Because that's my prayers. God, show me things that I don't see about myself that are stopping me from thriving, from growing. Like, show me that. Reveal that to me. Right? Because sometimes it's hard to see the picture when you're inside the frame. I couldn't see it. And then I heard a message yesterday and I'm sitting here like, what? I literally, on my notes on my phone, I, I, I typed out all the notes. All the stuff that was coming up for me, right? And I wanted to share this because I know I'm not alone in this journey. I know I'm not, I'm, I'm not the only person that has been doing this, right? But we got to get to the root of it because it's not about the other person. It's about you. The lessons that we're learning are about us. It's not about the other person. So continue to learn the lessons, continue to grow. And then once you learn, excuse me, you get, you get to come back and teach other people. Hello, here I am. I'm learning this stuff and I'm sharing it, right? It I didn't I didn't just wake up and one day I'm here. It took me it took it took intentional intentional intentionality, right? So I'm intentional about what I watch. I'm intentional about the investments that I make in myself, right? It all starts with me. If if not if nothing nothing changes if nothing changes. You are the change and you are your own rescue. So stop trying to give that life, your life jacket to somebody else. When you're on a plane, right? What do they tell you in case of emergency? You take that mask off and you put it on yourself. It doesn't say put it on your passenger. It says put it on yourself. You are no good to nobody else if you ain't good to you first. I had to learn to put myself first. I had to learn to love me. So I wouldn't fall for people. I love you. I love you. I want to be with you. Eh, I got to love me. I got to love me. That sounds good, but I got to love me first. And whether a relationship works or doesn't work, I got me. Because you are your own rescue. You got to put yourself first. You got to take care of you. You got you to gotta pull up those old roots, right? When they come up, when those triggers come up, because <laughs> they coming, they will come. And it's not about what the person posts or what the person said. It's not about the video or the, it's none of that. It's about what it what is happening inside of me that I have been ignoring that I'm not aware of. Go within. Go within. Get the support, get the help that you need for you. Because you are your own rescue. I'm telling you, you are your own rescue. You got you you've got to figure this out. You got to. If not, you're gonna stay in the cycle. I don't know about you. I don't want to keep repeating the test. I don't want to keep taking the same test. I want to pass it. I want to keep elevating. I want to keep elevating. I don't want to keep taking the same test over and over again. And he's so like he's so dope. He'll just he just be giving you tests. You don't even know they test. Right? People in a conversation saying all kinds of stuff. He want to see how you're gonna handle that. What you gonna say? You gonna clap back? You gonna fight back? Because a lot of stuff we're asking for, we're praying for, and it's not that. It's not that he don't want to give it to us. He know that we, he knows that we're not ready for it. But if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. <laughs> if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. Sometimes family can be the most toxic. You have to find your strength and understand your assignment. Yeah. And also you have to have boundaries, right? Boundaries are so important and boundaries protect you and your relationship, right? My daughter was found hung in Houston. The police asked no questions. Oh my God. Justice for, right? Is it Aaliyah? Justice for, I'm so sorry to hear that. Justice for Aaliyah. Um, she was holding a cell phone. My God, I'm praying for you, sister. Her and her ex is a is an app called Stereo, and her username is Aaliyah Killer. They use it. Oh my God. Oh, that's just sad. That's sad. Oh, yeah. I don't have any words. I'm praying for you, sister. See, people say all kinds of stuff, but you have to ignore it because some if people, it's a, it, the comments that people say are, are a reflection of their, of what they're experiencing, right? So a lot of times, this is what I'm learning in um, entrepreneur school because we're looking at feedback, we're looking at feedback, right? And you can take it as performance or you can take it personal. We look at, we look at the feedback and we say, oh, well, they saying I'm musty or they saying I'm this, I'm saying, look at here. A lot of times people are expressing their opinion from where from, from what they see, right? It's just really their, pers- their perspective, right? 
and you don't have to take on their comments. It has nothing to do with you. They don't even know you personally. And even if they did, it's like, do I value this? Do I value this comment? Do I value this person? Like, am I going to internalize that and make it about me? No, I'm not. I'm going to say, I I hope you have an amazing day. I love you. And I mean it. (laughs) So I'm learning. I'm learning. um, This is where I'm at also. And it's all lessons. It's lessons and it's tests. Life are full of lessons and tests. And guess what? Let's see. Are you the everybody's so creative? Um, I don't know. Like some comments are like, what are they talking about? I don't know. But listen, so I'm, for those who just joining over here, I'm sharing a fresh lesson about being an obstructionist. So an obstructionist is a person who deliberately or, or inadvertently delays or prevents the growth or change in their life or someone else's life. So a fresh, a fresh lesson of mine was I realized my teenager was running a show this week. She was running a show. She was trying to fix and rescue and save other people. And I had to realize that that's not my job. Like, you're doing it again. Stop. Don't do that. And here are the five signs of, um, you know, you being an obstructionist. <laughs> so you subconsciously believe that the lesson the person needs to learn can only come from you. That's number one. Number two, you complain about someone sucking the life out of, the, out of you, but you keep giving them the straw. Child, my, my, my shirt said, get somebody else to do it. Get somebody else to respond to the people that got stick crazy stuff to say, say, get somebody, <laughs> get somebody else to do it. So number three, unable to establish and maintain a boundary with a particular person or people who cause you stress and pain. The way you express your love towards someone is your attempt to control them. Number five, you enter a relationship to rescue, save and fix other people. Can you raise your hand if that was you? I'm telling you, that was me. I was like, I, I can save them. I can fix them. I can rescue them. That is not your job, okay? So here are the three myths about an obstructionist. If I don't help, they will fail, right? If I don't help, they'll fail. That's a myth. Myth number two, if I don't help them, I'm a failure. That's myth number two. Number three, myth. If I don't help them, I don't love them. That's myth number three. Okay, here are the truths, because after you discover, after you uncover the lies, you've got to replace those lies with the truth. Okay, because if not, you're going to keep on going back to the lie. So here's the truth. Number one, you can't control the timing when God will open the eyes of the eyes of learning for someone. That's number one. Number two, you can't control the method God will use to help someone. Number three, you can't control the people that God uses to teach the lesson to the people you love. You can't control that. Take your hands off of it. I literally had to take my hands off of it this week. I was like, you know what? I was just sitting there. I was just so, oh, and it was like, cause you're doing, you're trying, God's like, you're trying to do my job. Girl, sit down some way. Bye. I was doing that. And sometimes, and I'm telling you, I realized where it came from. It came from my childhood. Seeing my mom in an abusive relationship, seeing seeing her getting abused and wanting and trying to step in and save and and stop stop this thing was happening because I know she came when she came into my room, I know that she came in there because she she thought he would stop beating her in front of me, but he didn't. He didn't, and I picked up this little red toy horse that belonged to my my sister and my brother, and I tried to hit him with it. He pushed me out the way, and I felt so helpless. And in that moment, my teenage brain, and during that experience, my teenage brain created a belief that it was my job to rescue, save, and fix other people. And that's what I did in all of my relationships until I learned that that ain't my job, right? But then this lesson came back around again because the person that's closest to me, I couldn't see my, I couldn't see that I was still doing that. It's hard to see the picture when you're inside the frame. And my lesson was like, wow, I was sitting here like, what is like, what is going on? Like, why do I feel like this? And I was listening to Therapy Thursday. I listened to Therapy Thursday the next day after on Friday. So Therapy Thursday Thursday was called Mr. or Miss Fix It. And then he gave this word. I never heard this word before. Obstructionist. A person who deliberately or inadvertently delays or prevents the growth or change in their life or someone else's life. And I was like, oh, I'm doing that. I'm doing it again. I'm doing it again. (sighs) 
I just, I just really had to, and, and he, and here's the thing about that. The lessons that I'm learning, I'm, it's, it's just so fast. Cause I, my prayer every day is God show me anything that's blocking me that I don't, that I'm not aware of. Show me the things that are holding me back because I want to fulfill your purpose and I, I don't want nothing blocking that. So remove, like reveal those things to me. And it literally is happening like that. Cause I'm telling you, I was going through that all week and I heard this message on Friday and I'm sitting here like, wait a minute, this man talking to me, he talking to me. I was doing this and I didn't realize I was doing it. Now, before a few years ago, I wouldn't have this awareness, but see, I've been unlocking. I've been undiscovering things about myself, right? Instead of pointing the finger at everybody else, because the lesson ain't about them. The lesson was about me. I was like, and this person doing this, and this person going through the same thing over and over again. And it's like, it ain't about them, honey. It's about you. Let God be God. Let God be God. Like you ain't, you ain't God. You can't fix, save and rescue them. You can't do that. <laughs> like, and my love, my, cause my teenagers, my teenager was running the show and that's what happens. I love and appreciate my teenager, but I can't let her run the show. I can't let her run the show. New information requires new decisions and new actions. We are where we are as a result of our decisions, our decisions and our habits, right? I had to pull that root up in order to produce new fruit. You got to pull that root up, right? I had this, um, this plant. Yeah, I was trying to like, know that like, that ain't my job to save and rescue people. Girl, bye. Sit down the way. And here's God. He'll, he'll let you, he'll let you just go out there and do all kinds of stuff. He'd be like, mm, okay, when, whenever you get tired, you, you get out the way so I can do my thing. So I had this plant, y'all. It was a, um, a okra plant. That thing died. It was so dead. And I was like, let me just pull this whole thing up. Cause it's, I can water it all day long, but it's the root. It's dead. It's, it's not produced. It's not growing. It's just, it's just, it's just hanging. It's hanging over. I had to pull it up. And that's us, right? Whenever we find that thing that's just no longer productive, no longer producing fruit, we have to pull it up and plant new seeds and continue to water. We got to water it. And we have to know that every season is not our season, but there is a due season. Every season is not our season, but there is a due season. Keep on watering it. Keep on taking care of it. Keep on planting those seeds. Because when it's your time, it's your time. And I know he will expedite. He will expedite you. <laughs> he will expedite your growth. He will expedite that. He will, he will just put, he will take you from the back of the line to the front of the line without, without talking to anybody. Cause he don't need nobody approval. He doesn't. He'll just put you in the front of the line. You know what? You've been back here for a while. I think I'm ready to put you right here. But I'm telling you, he's going to test you. He's going to test you through his people. They're going to say all kinds of stuff to you. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It's the experience they're having. Because a lot of times people share from their perspective. And we all see things differently based on our experiences. So that's why I choose not to take things personally. Because we all are sharing from our perspective, our experiences. And we all have different experiences. That's what I know. Is, and I agree to disagree. Like some people, I'm like, yeah, I disagree with that. And that's okay. You can disagree with me. And that's okay. So as I'm looking at the feedback, I take, I, t- I, I eat out the meat. I eat the meat, spit out the bones. All feedback, you might not need it. Okay, so maybe, you know, I do need to, I need to, I do need to look in this area right here. I need some improvement right there. Yeah, is is that what the slave masters taught the ancestors tricked into submission for Christianity? Yeah. I mean, just think about it. <laughs> I think about I think about, you know, kids growing up. Like, you know, I mean, in you know, back in slavery, if you did something, like you they beat you for certain different things, right? You beat your kids for what? Being loud or talking or whatever. And it's like, I think that this is what cuz this was what was done to them when they were slaves, right? Everything ain't about no beating. <laughs> my child got, got got to a point where the beating it, it didn't even it didn't even work. This is like what? I'm like, okay, so you know, I got to take you got to you got to you got to look at other ways for punishment, right? For to not even punishment. What's the word I want to use? Discipline. That's the word I'd rather use. Yeah, and it's okay to agree to disagree. It's just feedback. It's just feedback. I've gotten so much feedback, honey. I'm just like, okay, 
I'm getting pretty comfortable with it. <laughs> I'm getting real comfortable with it. And that's okay. It takes time. It takes time to get there. When I first started doing these videos and people would say stuff, honey, I would block them so fast. I was like, mm, I don't like what they're saying. Block. Now it's like, okay, they said what they said. It's okay. It's all right. But anyway, I'm rambling now. I'm complete. Anybody got any questions, comments? Thank you. Any questions or comments? This is a, let me stop this.